Good morning and welcome to another edition for Food for Thought. It's Thursday, January the 21st, 2021. We're continuing our thoughts and reflections in the book of James and I'm glad you could be with us here today. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada and uh, just glad that you could join us. So we're continuing in James chapter 1. Uh, today we're going to be just having a quick look at verses 22 to 25. So this is what James says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and then after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget, forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Now, it's good for us to reflect on sound biblical teaching when we receive it. It's really important for us to read our Bibles or to listen to the scriptures. And there, there's many different sources that we can find to do that. I mean, there's modern technology that enables us to watch different teachings and uh, we got audio Bibles that we can listen to, we can put them in our vehicles, we can listen to them on our computers or our devices, we can take the physical um, printed Bible and read it and meditate on the scriptures and it's, it's really good for us to do that. But it can also be easy for us to, to get absorbed into listening to good teaching of the Word of God without truly being disciples of it. And in the ancient world, we see that um, it was common for people to hear a teacher, but if you followed that teacher and you tried to live what was being said, they would call you a disciple. Now, Jesus is looking for not only um, people to pay attention to what he has to say through his word, but he also wants us to be disciples, not just hearers of the word, but doers of it. And the apostles um, wanted people to pay attention to the bread of life that they had received uh, from the Lord. The, the, the apostles had tasted of this food, the spiritual food that Jesus had passed to them as of first importance. And, and we see that even in 1 Corinthians when, when we have the communion passage where, you know, what I've received from the Lord I pass unto you as of first importance. You see, on the night Jesus was betrayed and then we go into the communion passage, the apostles recognized that the sustenance, the spiritual food that they had came from God and not from themselves. But they desired not only to be filled with the food that God gave them, but they also desired to, um, to distribute it to other people so the other people could taste and see that the Lord was good as well. Now, a number of years ago, um, our congregation, as you know, we changed our church name from Bethel to Hillside. And um, there's a number of reasons why we did that, but one of the most important reasons that we did that is, is we recognized that Jesus Christ um, was the one who had given us spiritual food and that he had commissioned us to be distributors of the same spiritual food that we had been given, um, the, the food that brought us spiritual life. And um, as it so happened, we happened to have a food distribution service that's inter-church called Loaves and Fishes operating on our property. So I'm thinking, you know, well, with Loaves and Fishes, you know, the, the disciples gathered uh, together. And um, what, what do we know about Loaves and Fishes in the Bible? Well, there's actually two different miracles that um, are done by the Lord Jesus Christ involving Loaves and Fishes. And there's no accident that there's two. God wanted to reinforce something to us. The first is in Matthew chapter 14, um, where, where Jesus was teaching spiritually hungry people. 
that were coming to see him on the hillside. He was teaching them on the hillside, and he was distributing his his words to them. And they were hungry physically. And the, the apostles or the disciples at that time were like, well, how do we feed these people? Should we send them away? And Jesus was like, no, you feed them. How can we feed this many people? It would take so much. You know, it would take more than a year's wages to feed all these people. In other words, they said it was impossible to feed these people. And Jesus said, you know, bring me what you have, right? So, you, you know the story. Jesus asked the disciples to gather what they had, and they had loaves and fishes that they brought to him, just a small amount. And then Jesus prayed and blessed that food and then gave it back to the disciples, and they distributed it to the people. And the people took and they broke off the bread and the fish, and uh, they passed it to the person sitting next to them. And as you see, the whole crowd on the hillside was fed miraculously, not from provisions of men, but provisions from God. God took the limited things that his disciples had to offer, and he multiplied that, and that is what fed the people. It was, it was multiplied from heaven. In that first miracle, there was 5,000. In the second miracle, there was 4,000. In Matthew chapter 15, we see that. So the, the disciples became distributors of the good things that they had received from the Lord. And then the people, in turn, distributed the good things that they had received and passed them on. And this is, was the plan of God to fill all of the people that were hungering and thirsting for truth and had gathered to hear the words of Jesus. You see, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What does the scripture say? For they shall be filled. You see, but the point of it all was not just for personal consumption. You know, it, it, it was would have been good for the people to hear the words of Christ and hear the words of his apostles saying, here, take the bread and, and eat, but then pass it on to the next person. Well, can you imagine if everybody just sort of took the food that was given to them and just consumed it and didn't pass it on? That would be kind of like hearing the words of Christ without doing them. You see, God's, God wants us to participate with him. He could have went, boom, and everybody would have had a plate of food in front of him, but he wanted his disciples to participate with him in his plan of salvation, deliverance, and healing of the multitudes on the hillside. So, so God called them to this purpose. And um, you see, he wants us to, to see, taste and see that he is good and be, receive personal nourishment from that. But he also wants us to pass it on to the next person beside us. This is be, being a doer of the word that we have heard, that we have consumed that we have tasted, and, and, and sending it back out to bless others. And then God actually blesses others through our participation. You see, the source of the loaves and fish in the 5,000 and the 4,000 miracle, the source was from heaven. You know, God used the little gifts that the disciples had and multiplied that, and, and everybody participated in that process, but ultimately the miracle was heavenly. So it is with our Christian faith. Hungry souls all around us, needing to hear the word of life, needing to taste and see that the Lord is good. And God asks us to be distributors of what has been passed on to us as of first importance. That message of the cross, that message of the gospel is so important. So we don't want to become you know, consumers of the faith where we just hear good teaching. We want to take that teaching and put it into practice. When Jesus rose and, uh, you know, told the disciples that he was going to come again, but he rose into heaven, what was his commission? Go into all the world and preach the good news to every living creature, you know, to all people, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That, that, that is the great commission of the church. God wants us to be not only hearers of that, but yes, you, 
in the various capacities that God has given you. He wants you to pass the word to the person next to you. You you didn't just call one or two people to distribute all the food everywhere. Everyone passed it on. And the whole hillside was filled. Interestingly enough, I really find this fascinating. You see, God gives us more than enough. More than enough to consume and to pass on. At the end of the 5,000 miracle in Matthew 14, um, with the 5,000, Jesus asked the disciples to collect the baskets of food left over, and there were 12. You see, that that represents God um, having more than enough to feed all of his people. 12 represents the full fullness of the people of God, like the 12 tribes of Israel. More than enough. The Gentiles were grafted in to the root of the patriarchs. We, we, we taste of the nourishment of the goodness of God and all of God's people. There's more than enough for all of them. And, and the second time with the 4,000, um, we see that there were seven basketfuls left over. In other words, God gives us everything we need. Seven represents the completeness of God. He's completely given us exactly what we need. All sufficiency has been given to us um, in completeness. Seven represents that completeness of God. So today, when we're out there doing our thing, be a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. Let's not just reflect on these things and then walk away and forget what it is that God has called us to do. But let us obey the Lord and to pass it on. There's hungry people out there that need to see Jesus. And as a church, as Hillside Community Church, we have a mission. And that's to distribute the goodness of God to others as He has been good to us. God bless you. This is Food for Thought.